Hey, well, let's go over the case that you brought real quick. Sure. Yep. So, you know, I work at the University of Chicago, the South Side of Chicago. Unfortunately, there is a ton of trauma that we see, and majority of it actually is penetrating trauma. So this is a patient who presented after a knife wound to the right upper quadrant. And on this CTA, you can see as we scroll through it, there is a pretty large, obvious bleed here in, arising from segment four. And this is just a still image showing that bleed again. Wow. Yeah, pretty large. So we took this patient to angiography. This is a selective hepatic ang angiogram. And again, you can, as we sort of zoom up here, there's a segment four arterial bleed that we had seen on the CTA. So our goal here is to follow this orange line and, and get into the segment four hepatic artery. As you can see, my base catheter here is a VS1 or a SOS catheter, a reverse nerve catheter. And we're gonna use our microcatheter now to selectively catheterize that artery. And now we're in the segment four hepatic artery. And you can see here, again, zoomed up. This is the angiogram that delineates where that bleed is. And this is sort of what I was talking about, having uh, a nice runway, you can see here. So this for me was a nice ideal case for obsidio, or especially an early obsidio case. This vessel is less than three millimeters. This is a brisk bleed, so I really wanna get a durable occlusion and I wanna get it done fast. There's a nice long landing zone, as you can see here, as uh, delineated by that orange dashed arrow. And so this, I felt like, was a great place to originally, you know, sort of initially use Obsidio for, uh, for use. This is the fluoroscopy uh, or fluoro loop of the actual embolic going in. So just the pearls again, you know, that I talked about, really want to magnify and use a high fluoro rate or flavor to optimize visualization. I typically use the IFU method for injection of obsidio, which is to actually essentially load the entire microcatheter with obsidio. So I don't, uh, the, the alternative method is to use what's called the aliquot or bullet method, take a small amount, uh, like 0.1 or 0.2 cc's, and then push it out with saline. Um, in this case, as you can see here, um, it took a really small amount of embolic, about 0.2 cc's. And it's a little bit paradoxical. The slower you inject, uh, the more distal the penetration, the more the harder you inject, it actually sort of comes out and plugs up the vessel like a plug. So again, to review this over still images, this is after 0.1 cc, so tiny, tiny amount. You can see that you can sort of faintly visualize the obsidio there, but then after just another 0.1 cc, it becomes a readily more apparent and more obvious there. So um, and this, again, is after just 0.2 cc's, um, you get a complete occlusion. It's completely static. There's no flow through it. And again, you can see on the uh, dynamic image on the right, there's no flow going into that vessel. So really tiny amount. It's a really fast. That whole floral loop that I just showed you in the prior slide was the actual procedure itself. That was really all of it. And, and I think most of us who use coils know that you have to place a coil or two, check, usually come back, place another coil. So there's none of that. You don't really have to do that dance anymore. Right. And again, if I could leave you with one thing is more often than not, point two is going to be plenty of embolic. So yeah. sorry, I think I cut you off there, Aaron. No, no, no. That's very cool. And it remind me, is this, uh, is it permanent or is this a re eventually? It is meant to be permanent. And then I think over, you know, I have to, I have to re-familiarize myself with the literature, but I think over a long time, I think it, it, it sort of degrades. But by then, it's basically the vessel is, has been thrombosed or yep, occluded. And this is what I was talking about where, you know, this is this, that was the CTA on the pre-imaging. This, this patient ended up getting a post, a CT along their care for other reasons. And you can see the obsidio looks like very dilute contrast. You don't get that streak artifact that you would get with, uh, with like an onyx type material or even coil sometimes. And you can see post stabilization changes with no bleeding. Very cool. Cool. Yeah, that's great, man. I mean, do you see it being used for like splenic uh, traumas? I mean, could it be? Uh, there, I mean, that's you know, it's a bigger vessel. No, it can't be though, because it's not because of the size, right? Because it doesn't have to be less than three millimeters. Yeah, that's the ISU recommendation. I think if you're doing a proximal splenic embolization, I'm not sure how useful it would be unless you had a backstop. I think if you put a uh, a coil or a plug and then possibly tried it. I do actually have a partial splenic embolization coming up that I'm going to try it for. Oh yeah, where you know that makes sense. That would be a little bit different. Go distal and and you know knock off 
um, parts of the spleen. I think that might be an interesting application for it.